What's up everybody? This is Connor and Joshua with Chamber One Tactical. Today we've got a pretty interesting video for you guys. Uh, it's not one that I was expecting to come out the way it did. Um, we've got the Smith & Wesson Metal 2.0. Is it the Comp Carry yeah. or Carry Comp carry or whatever? Comp. Um, so this is a metal frame uh, 9mm handgun with a built-in compensator to the actual slide and barrel. So pretty interesting gun and we got some uh, pretty incredible results with it, so let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing we usually start off with is the price point of the gun because that is pretty important to everybody. Uh, so this gun's coming in right at a thousand dollars. It's right around a thousand dollars. Depending on obviously your gun store and the state you live in, uh, it may vary, but you know, we got it for just under a thousand dollars. So a pretty, you know, kind of getting closer to your high end value. This is a performance yeah. center Smith, so you are gonna see a little bit higher price tag. Um, and we're going to kind of go over what you're getting with that little higher price tag and does it perform enough for you to go spend the extra money on a gun like this. So mm -hmm. the first thing we're going to go over real quick is the sight setup that this gun has. Um, so obviously, you know, actually I'm gonna, I'll take that back. We're going to go over what you get in the box because this is a performance center. Mm -hmm. So um, with it, you're going to get two 17 round metal magazines. Uh, with some gigantic base plates on there, just pointing that, <laughs> pointing that out. Um, in the box, you're going to have all your paperwork uh, and receipts, in my case. Um, and then you are going to get the optic plates uh, and screws, and then you're going to get some back, uh, back straps that are pretty easy to change in and out. And then this one came with a cleaning kit, um, which, you know, it is what it is. I don't really care either way. But uh, <laughs> it does come with a decent little cleaning kit if that's something that you're into. Um, but for the sight setup itself, you have a metal front sight and rear sight. The rear is going to be a pyramid style with the blacked out with some lines in there to kind of cut off the glare. Uh, and then your front sight is going to be a tritium filled with a green dot around it. So mm -hmm. pretty much the sight setup that I like and prefer on guns while shooting this thing, I really liked the sight setup. Um, we put an optic on here, but I'm probably going to be taking it off just because I like how well the gun shoots just with the iron sights. What do you think? And the fact that you can't co-witness with it. Yeah. So it, the unfortunately with this slide, it sits the optic up so high, you can't use your iron sights after that. So uh, this, this one's probably better set up for just shooting right. iron sights, in our opinion. Obviously, you can still shoot an optic. Sure. Um, moving on to the slide, the actual slide cuts, they did a great job actually making it very textured. Uh, so very, very easy to rack if you needed a chamber around and just overall the look of it. One of my favorite features that they did is something that the Echelon did, something similar to the Echelon, where without adding any width to the slide, they dug down a little bit more into their slide right here and added these little back tabs that you can grab onto. And it makes it really easy to pull back on the slide just having those taps. Yeah. Uh, so I think they did a really good job with milling out the slide. Yeah, I mean, I'm typically not a Smith & Wesson fan uh, as far as the look of the gun. You know, I've, I've had them before. They shoot good. Um, you know, we, we gave the Smith & Wesson Performance Center um, Shield Plus a glowing review. Mm -hmm. um, but it's typically not a company that I gravitate towards uh, for looks. But this gun completely turns that around. I mean, this yeah. is a very good looking gun. They have texturing in all the right places. The slide serrations are some of the coolest that I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, just a very futuristic, in my opinion, looking gun. You've got your cutout on the top. It's got the vents on the side. It's just a very good looking gun. Um, and I, I actually think it's one of the coolest looking guns that I've got right now. But um, going back real quick to the sight setup, these optic plates are my least favorite out of any of the guns we've been messing with here recently. I don't like how cheap and flimsy they are. They're all plastic. Um, I just don't prefer it. There are so many other options out there that have done a really good job with sights and figuring out how to mount multiple optics. 
whether it's little spacers or whatever it is, but this was a, a total, you know, just when I went to put this optic on here, I did not like the, the, yeah. the optic plates at all. Um, but moving on to the frame itself, the frame obviously is a metal frame, and I actually really like the frame. Yep. Uh, the feel of it, it's got these uh, polymer inserts on the front strap and the back strap, and I don't know if you guys keep hearing that um, as I'm messing with the gun, but that's the one biggest con, and it's not even about the performance of the gun. It's just a personal preference. Mm -hmm. But this little strap, front strap that they put in here, um, it just makes noise all the time. So it's got just enough room in there. I don't know if you can hit the case. It's got just enough room in there where it wiggles around. Uh, even when you insert a mag in there, um, it still has play yeah. in it. So that really bothers me. I know it shouldn't, but with a $1,000 gun, uh, having stuff like that, I just can't stand it. I, if I'm buying a metal frame gun, I want everything to be super solid. Yeah. And uh, having that, you know, if they were going to do it, I wish they would have figured out a better way to keep it from wiggling. And I've looked it up online because I didn't know if maybe mine was just a lemon or something. And other people have had the same issue. So that's just something that I feel took a great feeling gun, great shooting gun, and turned it into something that feels like they, they skipped some steps or there wasn't a quality control checker. Yeah. Something like that makes it just seem like a lower quality gun just in that small, you know, wiggling piece. So I wish that was something they would have took some more time into figuring out how to do that correctly because um, that's really one of the main cons I have about the gun, and it's not even about the performance. Yeah. So what do you think? I mean, I, I'm picky I about say, noises. The so. texture is phenomenal on it. Yeah. I mean, it really does. Like, once you actually squeeze it, the, it it's very aggressive, and I like it, yeah. and it doesn't. this doesn't move around while you're shooting. It's just when you're messing around with it, and I agree, it just makes it feel like it's cheap. Uh, yeah. It makes it feel like they didn't pay enough attention to it, and it doesn't affect the shooting of it. Doesn't affect the reliability or anything like that. It's just really like, come on, y'all could have figured that. Even if you put a little dab of glue or something to keep it from wiggling, it's just annoying. Yeah, and it, and you don't want to have something. If you just went and spent a thousand dollars, you don't want to come home, and the gun start rattling like it's a high point. Yeah. Um, that's not what you want to happen when you just drop a good bit of money on a gun. So, as far as everything else, for the most part, I would say this is a very ergonomic handgun oh, yeah. it fits you know all the curves in your hand and fills in your hand really well yeah the only thing that i didn't like and i think connor had the same issue is that while we were shooting the handgun right here on our thumb after we would be done shooting was kind of red and it was because and this is ambi so i'll show you on this side is the slide stop slide release right here it actually sticks out quite a bit uh right here and as we would put our hand on it, it just, as the gun was recoiling, it was just rubbing up against our hand. And uh, not a huge deal. Uh, we didn't cry about it or anything like that. It wasn't terrible. But it was something noticeable that we wanted to share with you guys as far as just ergonomics. And what most people do to kind of go around that is kind of build up the molding in the frame, um, at least underneath it and on the sides, at least flush with the mag release. Right. So it's not something actually poking out unless you're coming from up top. So... Uh, that's just one thing that we noticed, but everything else was actually really comfortable. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, it it was less of a... We've had gun, other guns that had the same issue, mm -hmm. and it was worse than this one. This one really didn't bother us too, too bad. Um, we shot a good bit, and it never got to the point where it was like a blister or if it or it was ripping skin off or anything like that. It was more of just a spot Comfort. where you'd yeah. get done shooting, and you're like, hey, why is my thumb a little sore right there? So, you know, I understand they're, they're trying to get it to where you can get a hold of it. Um, you know, and, and it's sticking out on both sides. I mean, it, it sticks out a decent amount. Yeah. Um, you know, and it actually, now that I look at it, protrudes more on the, on the right side, hand side of the gun for some reason. It looks like they didn't fold the metal down like they did yeah, on the left does. side. Yeah, it does. So I, that may be another quality control check, too. I've just now noticed that, so that's kind of funny. Hmm. Um, and while we're on the subject of Maybe cons... Maybe left-handed shooters need it bigger. I don't know. I don't now, know. <laughs> since we're on the subject of cons, so I got two mags with it. Um, one mag's perfectly fine, but as I was messing with this one, um, the little piece at the bottom of the base plate that's supposed to keep the base plate on, there's a little tab that is supposed to be depressed so you can push this. This just pushes right off. And I've tried everything to get this to stay on, um, but something is wrong with this little plate in here where it will not... It won't fit up into the little hole that they've got in the bottom of the base plate. Um, the other one works just fine. But this one, I'm, I even put, you know, a knife down in there trying to pop it over, a little screwdriver, and it will not seat. Um, so, again, 
the gun has functioned great. We have no malfunctions whatsoever. The reliability has been great. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll get into the trigger real quick. But uh, the main issues I have with this gun are quality control issues. It's issues with dumb things like a mag base plate not being seated correctly, the little thing wobbling in the front. Mm -hmm. Just now seeing that, I, I'm, I'm going to have to look into that and see if that's something normal or if, or if all of them are like that, if we just have a weird one. Um, but yeah. little things that you would expect someone to take an extra look at, especially if they're charging more for the gun, um, obviously didn't happen. So I'm a little disappointed in the quality control checks on this gun. Um, yep. But talk about the trigger real quick because yeah. I know that'll bring it back. <laughs> yeah, so the trigger on this is actually a really good trigger. It's uh, got obviously some take up, comes to a very distinct wall, and it breaks. Uh, the reset is a little bit different. Yeah. It's not bad. It's nice and short. Um, but... I don't, y'all probably couldn't even hear that. It's, it's very, very quiet. It's not as tactile as me and Connor like to see. Uh, but I will say that when you're actually shooting this firearm, it's a very quick trigger to shoot. Yeah. Um, it's just that while you're sitting there actually trying to feel the trigger, it's just that reset is very, just, it kind of sneaks up on you. It's yeah, not, there's not much. It's not of very a predictable, at, yeah. you know, uh, where other firearms, it's like, you know exactly where that reset's going to be. This one you've got to figure out a little bit. Yeah, I would agree. The the break is nice and crisp. The mm -hmm. wall is nice and it's firm, and you you know exactly where you're hitting your wall. But like you said, the reset just doesn't really happen. It just uh, as you're you know working the trigger. Oh, there's the reset, and you never really knew it was there. Yeah, it doesn't um, like click. You know, you you can't feel it. And and to be honest with you guys, I don't know if if, if any of you guys have ever shot the Smith and Wesson CSX when it came <laughs> out. We are having the same issues with this gun as we did with that gun. I did. I loved that gun, other than the trigger and the little inserts that they had. Same yeah. thing with this. The insert is messing with me, and the, the reset on the trigger, you pretty much just have to pull the weight off your finger, and then it will reset without you knowing, and then you're back into the trigger. Like he said, it's quick, it's fast, it's a short reset, and you can shoot very well with it, and quick. It's just you got to take some time to really get used to this right. gun to be able to shoot it well. And I, I want to be very clear. The trigger's way better than the CSX. Oh, yeah. I yeah. wouldn't compare it to the CSX, but I see what you're saying about the yeah. reset not being as tactile as other, other now, guns. Now, what completely changes the review on this gun is the performance. Yes. Um, this compensator or port, giant port, whatever <laughs> you want to call it, um, performed great. Uh, we had some other ported, uh, not ported, we had some other compensated guns out uh, while we were shooting this gun, and we actually have a video comparing um, multiple co uh, comped guns out there, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But yep. uh, this gun performed very well. Uh, I was actually really impressed with the gun. Uh, you know, there's little things that I may not personally like or that I may have issues with, but there's no denying performance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can get over little things like that if I have a gun that shoots really well and is very, um, you know, the gun has given us no issues as far as, you know, reliability. reliability yeah. So I can't complain about any of that because the gun has been reliable and it just shoots really good. Mm -hmm. It's a great feeling gun. It's pretty smooth. It, it's just something about this gun has a very smooth shot. Um, so the, the little things that I have issues with as far as, you know, the, the quality control kind mm -hmm. of stuff, uh, it completely gets run over by the performance of the gun because it really does shoot well. Yeah, especially for the size gun that it is, uh, being how short the slide actually is, you could actually carry this gun. Um, it holds 17 rounds, relatively short slide. The recoil is very minimal. I mean, it shoots great. You can shoot this gun really, really fast. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as far as actually shooting it, the reliability on it, I mean, it's one of the best handguns out there. Yep, I agree with you. And, you know, for my, my personal opinion... If I'm gonna, you know, give a review on this gun, in, in my opinion, this mm -hmm. gun is 100% worth what they're asking for it. Um, okay. Other than the little piece up here, I really can get over the trigger. You guys know we're big, we're big on triggers. Um, yeah. I can get over the trigger because, like you said, we were we were able to shoot the gun very well, oh, yeah. very fast, and it points very naturally. Very naturally. Yeah. So I can get over little things like that. I'm on the, obviously looking to get my mag fixed or getting them to send me another one or whatever. But the amount of features that this gun does have and the way that this gun does perform, um, I think it's 100% worth what they're charging for it and compared to what some other guns in its you know, similar category are being charged. Um, this is a pretty good deal, in my opinion. Uh, so based on the information that we have right now, I would 100% recommend this gun, and I think it's worth what they're asking for it. What would you say? I would say 
that I would recommend it, but I'm disappointed. I still think Smith & Wesson needs to look, re reassess this, look into it. Um, what do they need to reassess? Tell this, them what you think. for sure. Yeah. Uh, the optic, I would really, I don't, I don't know if it's possible on, you know, the whole design. Yeah. I, obviously, I know there's moving parts in here, so they might not be able to drop it down lower. Right. But if you guys could, Smith & Wesson, if you're listening, <laughs> you know, if you could drop that optic down a little bit lower, uh, there's nothing, I have nothing against running iron sights. Or just raise your sights up. Cause yeah, we, or we've, raise the sights. We've, sight. we've, we've dealt enough. with some guns, too, that they Fair just enough. put suppressor eye sights on it. That, that's a good point. That's a really good point. But in my opinion, as of right now, I would dedicate this gun to be an iron sight gun. Yeah. So I would, re if I were to recommend this to somebody, I would recommend this, this to somebody that doesn't really care too much about an optic. Yeah. Um, that they're fine running the iron sights, and this is still a great gun. But again, I was disappointed to see the magazine failure. I was disappointed to see that rattling. <laughs> disappointed to see that, and maybe just a little bit more attention to the uh, slide stop slide release. But when you're actually shooting it, it was reliable. It shoots great. The trigger's very easy to use, so I would still carry it. Yeah. Uh, I would still recommend it, but Smith & Wesson, please look into it. Yeah. You know, look into what upgrades you can still make to it. Yep. Yeah, and like, you know, every time we do a review, we tell you guys, this is just our opinion based mm -hmm. off of what we've found. There, you guys may go into a gun store and you may think, well, those Chamber One Tactical guys are just dumb because you may look, look at one of the gun stores and there's none of the issues that we're saying ours has. Um, this is just you know one of one we have not had any other guns of you know this exact model this mm -hmm. is the only one we've had so you know let us know if certain things that we touched on if you guys have had experiences with this let us know if you're if if ours may just be a lemon or something like that because um, you know because <laughs> all we have is just the one so right. um, but it's all based off of our findings after shooting the gun and you know tr really trying to test it to see if it's something that's going to work for you guys yeah um, but if you guys have any questions about anything we talked about just let us know down in the comment section if you want to help out the channel just make sure you subscribe and share the video as much as you can and we'll catch you next time